All right, hey, I'm Isaac Ostrom, and today we're gonna to be installing a little floor in my showroom. And I wanted to show this because I think it's a great place for beginners to start. And these pattern tiles are really popular right now. These, these kind of emulate a cement tile, but they're actually porcelain, a nice thick porcelain body. But these tiles are really fun. I love these for bathroom floors, for laundry room floors, some place where you wanna add a little fun and pop. Um, so we're going to be doing this, this floor grid right here and we got everything tore out. Um, first thing you want to do when you're, when you're doing a floor is make sure that your floor is flat and hopefully level. It, it doesn't have to be perfect, but if there's any big dips or humps in it, you want to make sure you either grind those humps out. This is a, a concrete foundation. So again, you have two different types of foundations. You either have a wood subfloor, which is usually plywood, or you have uh, concrete. We're here in California, so we have a lot of concrete floors. But um, you wanna make sure you're at least flat. It doesn't need to be level, but if your floor is flat, you're good to go. You don't wanna be building up a bunch with thin set to get your tiles level. Uh, but these tiles being an eight by eight are a lot easier to install than say like a 12 by 24, like this size. This size you got to get pretty flat because you don't want to end up with lippage. Smaller tiles can go over humps and dips a lot easier than a 12 by 24. So if you're a beginner, start with a tile like this. It's a great place to start. It'll be a lot more forgiving for you. So next thing we got to do after we know we got a flat subfloor, we're going to mark some lines to make sure we start in a square. We took two measurements off this point in this point and start our full tile right here. So we made one mark here and one mark here. And then we also made a mark down here, which is going to be where this line ends. But we can't just go off of these two lines because we don't know if they're square. And if they're not square, what's going to happen is your tiles are going to get pinched or they're going to open up and your grout joints won't be even. So we're going to go ahead and snap, snap these two lines and we're going to see if it's a square. And if it's not, we're going to go ahead and square everything up and we'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we got our chalk line right there, right on the mark. Go ahead and snap it, Devin. Let's just put chalk in this. Yeah, <laughs> and let's do it again. It's brand new. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go right on our mark. Okay, yeah, we're good right there. Okay, so we got our two perpendicular lines, and the way to find out if you have a square between any two per perpendicular lines is you can use geometry, Pythagorean theorem, and you can do a three, four, five triangle, and if they meet up, you have a square. So that's what we're gonna do. So you go to the intersection of where the two chalk lines meet. And this chalk line is kind of pale, but I can still see it. So what I'm gonna do is go four feet from that chalk line. So I got four feet, I'm starting right here. I'm gonna to go to the end of my tape measure and make a mark. So I got four feet right here. The other side, this other side, I'm gonna do three feet. You can see I got three feet right there. Make my mark. And now, so now the distance between these two points, if it's a square, will be five feet. So I put my tape at the end, right here. And five feet it's right there. So we're good. We got five feet at the intersection where four feet went this way. So we know we have a square. So the other way you can find out if you have a square or not in a small room is, is two levels. I have a six and a half foot level here. And I'm just gonna put this on the line. Put that on the line. I'll take I'll take my four foot level, I'll put that on the other line. And 
And then I'll take a framing square and check it. Just make sure all of the all of the ends line up in our square. And so we have a square. So that's the other way. This way is using, using two straight edges or two levels on a framing square is great for small rooms. But if you get into big floors, you're gonna have to snap chalk lines or use laser lines and find your squares that way. Okay, so the next thing that we do, since we found our square, we got a square, we're gonna work on the layout now. So what I did is, is I call this a, a story pole. It's basically making rows of tile so we know where the cuts are gonna be and how it's gonna lay out. If you look at this tile, you'll see we got these star patterns. We got the little gray stars, we got the little taupe colored stars. And so when this is all done, you see the pattern just as much as you see the individual grout joints. So what I did here, now this, this is gonna be a half a cut of a tile. Normally I might not want that, but since the cut is gonna be right here through half of a star and look over here, we got to cut through a half of a star on a full tile. So the pattern repeats itself. So that, so this actually works out really well. So I'm going to go with it. Uh, on the other end, we just have a full tile. So that's good. So now that I know how I want it to lay out, the next thing I'm going to do is mark lines going this way on the short side to make sure that I stay square. As I'm setting tile down here, if, if this starts to get off, Again, grout joints will pinch or they'll open up. So what I'm gonna do now that I got, I know where my tiles are gonna be, I'm going to make, make marks where I want to make some lines going this way. And what that's gonna allow me to do is comb a whole area of thin set and make sure that I stay square as I move down. So because I have this square line, I can snap any lines I want going this way, or I can use this line and snap lines off of it going this way. So I don't think I really need another line because this is only five feet. I don't really need another line going this way because I can work off that one line. But going this way for sure, I'm gonna want some lines going this way. Um, so I'm just gonna measure the distance off of there and mark some lines going this way. I picked up my, my story pole, and technically when I use the term story pole, what a story pole actually is, is when you do a layout of tile like that, and then they call it story pole because they would take a stick, and they would put the stick, lay it down next to the tiles, and then they would mark on the stick where all of the tiles are. So you would have this stick that showed all of the grout joints, so it would be real easy to just hold up and make marks where you know the grout joints are going to be. But anytime I run a, a run of tile just for measurements and to see where layout is, I just call it a story pole. So now that I have these two square lines, these two perpendicular square lines, I can measure off of anywhere I want. And as long as I'm staying square, we're gonna end up with good grout joints. So this here, the first mark I made was at 24 to 16. You can come in here closer, Devin. So I'm using my line here. I got 24 and a 16th to this mark. So what I'm gonna do is come out here. I have a four foot level. So I don't wanna go past my four foot level. I'll have to do it again. And I'm gonna go 24 and a 16th here. And then I'll take my, my level or my straight edge, can be either one. I'm going to make a new mark. My second mark, make sure I'm zeroed out there. We are 64 and a 16th there. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go 64 and a 16th, zero it out. Four and a sixteenth, right there. So 
So now that gives me some reference lines as I come down to keep my tiles on. So now that we got the layout, we're all ready to go. We got the tiles ready. Um, so we're gonna mix up some thin set. Okay, so we got our thin set all mixed up, ready to go. I have the line that I wanna comb my thin set to and set off of. So usually I just pour the thin set out, go like that. And then first you just wanna spread, spread your mud out. I use the flat side to spread it out, get the mud down approximately how much I wanna have down on the floor. You can do it with, with the notch side of your trowel, but I find it easier to burn it in first with the flat edge. Seems to be a little bit cleaner that way. A little more mud. And this is a 3 8 3 8 by 3 8 Anything bigger than a 12 by 12, like one of these 12 by 24s, you want to use this half inch by half inch, which is going to leave some more thin set down for larger tile. But for the smaller ones, this 3 8 notch is perfect. I gotta keep my line where it's at. I don't wanna go over it. I don't wanna lose my line. So cover, coverage is what's important. You want to make sure you have good, even coverage under your tiles. Okay, so now I'm just going to start setting my tiles. We'll check this out. Why do I need to back butter this tile if it sticks this good? It's a, it's a waste of time in my opinion. Again, if this, was, if this was a commercial floor, if this was something that they were going to be rolling real heavy stuff over, I would say do it. In a bathroom, I wouldn't sweat it. So I'm going to work my way down to my line here. If you're ever setting your tile, and you hear something under it, you hear that? That means there's something that was in the floor that we didn't clean up and you gotta get it out of there. And it's actually this little piece, that little piece of cement right there, that was holding it up. And so if something were to, to drop on that, it would break the tiles. When you set tiles, you want to make sure that you're setting them. You wiggle them in, move them so that the, the mortar, the ridges smash down, and it gives you better coverage. You don't ever want to just lay a tile like that and leave it. You actually got to set it. making sure that I can still see my line down here. It's hard for you guys to see, but I can see it. You can see also I'm not using spacers. I've been doing it a while and I can kind of judge where the, the spacer needs, needs to be.
On walls, you always need spacers because otherwise, obviously, they'll sag down on each other. But floors, especially if, if see these tiles, they're not rectified. They have a pressed edge on them. So the tiles aren't perfect. They're a little bit off sizes. So you kind of have to use your eye anyways to make sure they're fitting in nice. Some of the joints are going to be a little bigger and a little smaller than the others. When I finish a run, I've come down to my pencil line right here. So I usually like to take a straight edge and just make sure I'm, I'm all the way straight on that line. That's why I take my any excess mortar off of there. Make sure I'm straight. And then now I've, I'm ready to mark my cuts. Give myself a grout joint here and a grout joint here. And I know that's where the cut's going to be. So what I like to do is I put a mark on the side that I don't want. Um, some guys do it differently. They put a mark on the side of the tile they want to keep. Problem with that is you have to erase the mark off your tile on each cut. So I put it on the side I'm going to throw away or not use. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to be able to get two cuts out of one. But I know to set my gauge on the saw at this one, um, these are all the same. So I can come down here and measure and my cut's going to be good right here too. So I'm going to make four, I'm going to make eight of these. I'm going to go ahead and make eight of these cuts. It's a lot easier. The less trips out to your saw, the faster your job is going to go. So I'm just going to set up a gauge and rip eight of these and then we'll be ready to start our next run. Okay, so we're ready to make the cut. I got my mark. I'm going to go ahead and line it up. You can see right here, I make sure I'm cutting right on the line. And the nice thing about these DeWalt saws is they have a gauge. So you can just tighten the gauge and now I don't need to remeasure or remark every time I can just start cutting. Okay, so I got the two cuts I need. I just need six more, and we'll be ready to go back and install. Okay. Okay, so when you make a, make a cut, even on a wet saw that leaves a really nice cut edge, whenever you have a, a finished reveal cut, I like to use a rubbing stone. So yeah, with the rubbing stone, it takes an edge, and you just give it a little rub, and it leaves a really nice finish on the edge of the tile takes out any little of those micro chips. So get yourself one of these, they're, they're pretty inexpensive. Okay, so here, here is one of the, probably the biggest mistake that I see made by DIYs and people who are not used to doing a lot of tile is letting the thin set set up. So this has been sitting here a while since we had to go out and make the cuts. And if you put your fingers on the thin set, and even though it's soft, See how it's not sticking to my fingers? You need to take that thin set up. So if you were to take a tile and put it down on this mud, look, it, there's no stick to it. And that's, that's the biggest mistake that I see. A lot of times you'll go into a floor and you'll hear hollow sounds because these tiles will actually break bond because they were never stuck down to the thin set. They, the thin set skimmed over. And so what I'm going to do is take this out and butter the backs of the tiles.
and now they're stuck really well. So we're going to go ahead and put in the rest of these cuts. Uh, we're going to set some more tiles and um, just do more of the same. I, I do want to say, uh, give you a note. I, I talked about not, not back buttering. Uh, I feel comfortable doing that in a bathroom with smaller tiles. If there were larger tiles, like a 12 by 24, I would back butter those tiles and put them down. With the smaller tiles, they just seem to get in there and bite a lot better. Bigger tiles, I would always back butter. So that's a point I want to make. Okay, so what happens when you get into a corner in a, a bathroom or a small room, you got to figure out how you're going to work your way out. So obviously I can't just keep going this way because what will happen is I will work myself into a corner. So again, once I have control lines, I can just measure off of them. So I have this line here. I'm going to measure uh, 24 and a 16th. I made a mark and then 24 and a 16th down here and made a mark. And then I'll just draw myself a new line. And so I have a new square line to work off of. So I'll do this section and then this section and work my way out of the room. Wearing knee pads is a good idea. I've never really liked knee pads. They just, they bug me and I feel like they hurt me worse, but if I were you, I would wear knee pads. <laughs> stay uh, square with your your lines everything ends up nice and again you'll see a lot of um, bad floors out there where the joints will start to pinch in or you see them get really wide and that's just a matter of not staying square so we'll set the last tile And we got a beautiful, fun floor. Again, this would be awesome for like maybe a powder bathroom or a laundry room or just somewhere you want to make a statement. But it, it's cute. It's fun. It's uh, just really, really cool. I like, I like these pattern tiles and they're really coming into style. So if you're looking for an easy floor to do, if you're a DIY out there, this is a great place to start an 8x8 porcelain pattern look tile. I think you'll do great with it. Leave your comments in the section below if you have any questions. I love you guys. I love being your tile coach. We'll see you on the next video.